happen. Uh, but as we get into this game number one of this best of three, the crowd feeling ready, feeling the love for both these squads. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot on the back of Chris Huck this game to have a lot of impact on the Storm. He doesn't have many stuns on his team besides the Chrono, and you don't want to depend on Chrono to do everything for you. And it's a good matchup, Storm versus Pango. It's kind of one of the more famous matchups. When you pick Pango, you think Ember, Puck, Storm is the big three to counter you in the mid lane. So he has a little advantage draft-wise, and it's just a lot. He is playing versus Silence on Drow. He's playing versus the Pango, which, you know, in some cases is good versus him with the built-in BKB. Even all the save from him dying, so he's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, it's not like a hex, but, you know, it's <laughs> if you make one bad zip a little bit too close, you don't have that initiation coming in first for one of your allies. Uh, certainly a, a, could be a problem there for C-Smile. Well, and we also should mention real quickly, too, there's, you know, so much that's kind of been made about, okay, the aggressive style that we see out of South America and stuff like that. And I think that's very true for Thunder Awaken. But when you look at Beast Coast, this is a team that's very comfortable going into the late game. And with this lineup, you've got a Faceless Void, you've got a Storm Spirit running out there late. There, there's some interesting stuff going on. Is there a particular team that you feel like you favor if we get to that late game scenario? I think... Still probably LGD. Beast Coast have a more early mid-game timing with the Wraith Pact on Visage. LGD don't have a Wraith Pact fire, so this early, you know, 15 to 25 minutes where the Wraith Pact really matters is in Beast Coast's favor. In addition to, you know, that's the big Storm timing. He has this Ag timing later yeah. in the game, but there's not an amazing follow-up outside of a snap, I would say. So probably when it gets to late game, the power of Drow Slardar will kind of kick in once we get to the 30, 40 minute mark, but I think Early game, it's very good chance that, you know, they get run over by Enchantress on the pressure mid, Visage on the pressure bot, even just a random Chrono here or there getting some important kills into Roshan. Oh, like you were pointing out there, uh, Lyrical, certainly not been their forte necessarily over the year as well. Like, uh, when, when you tend to tune in to some of the Beast Coast TVC yeah, games, you'll often games. find that they're behind. Right. You know, they tend to drop sometimes in the laning stage. They, they don't quite get, like, that same aggression as, like, maybe, like, two years ago, where you'd always see this rotation of, like, Hector's playing a stun in the carry lane, right? He gets the stun into the rotation mid from mid. Speaking of some rotation, yeah. Ame in a lot of trouble as they run him down. He might just be oh. dead as the chase continues. Right. That is a first blood whisper claiming this early you get this start for a visage can be very scary as the lane goes on one of the big things with visage is this hero plays to win the lane the entire concept of the hero is use all of your mana to deal so much damage and hope you get the kills so you buy the mana back which was you know one of the slight concerns about snapfire you can't melee body up for the visage it's a lot of commitment if you go in but they get the first blood that's a lot of regen some stats that whisper will get and now is where the lane looks hard <laughs> yeah that's where wise gonna put in that big work there on the undying of course uh, i hear a well known for trying to do this right bully right back also just trying to spend all of your gold for mana sitting with a full-on fruit stand here of six mangoes ready to spam some decay yeah, and in the in the mid lane, I think this is again this is where the supports really want to rotate, especially the Enchantress. I think we're going to see an early rotation at even the five minute mark on the siege, where you know nothing to say maybe dies once, even a, he'll die again, and that's where the game completely breaks down if it happens. You're seeing Stinger up there also already trying to put some harassment and took over the range creep. Um, that piercing damage, pretty good at being able to deny out some of those creeps, but needs to watch out for the arrow coming from Zing Q. So we'll keep our eyes on that, but again, down bottom, the aggression and why just drops again. We talked about Whisper. Watch out for this guy. He has been having a hell of a tournament. Yeah, and this is one of those issues with Undying. Like, you see it early in the tournament. And uh, obviously the hero is still very strong, but there's certain matchups that you don't really want to be playing into. You're, you're hoping for like double melee strength heroes, right? That, that's kind of the dream. And what do you got here? You have a ranged strength hero and you have a visage, right? Mm. People are always like, they understand that Undying is still strong, especially through like the, the mid game and even some parts of the later game with the vision from the tombstone. But when you can find these lane punishes, that's where it feels like you're actually like able to sort of remove some of the benefits they're getting from that hero. He just keeps buying mangoes. He brought another one out too. So uh, why hopefully going to be able to use those. If he keeps dying, that is uh, not going to end up serving him too well. But a lot of free mangoes when you die. That's fair. But yeah, so Visage is uh, the, the way you beat and dying a lot of the time is Zoo. A lot of summons and Visage has the summons. He has the laning versus him. The birds kill the tombstone in the mid to late game with all the attack speed. So really nice massive matchup. It's generally just that Undying has a slight edge in the lane if his carry is able to be aggressive with him. Mm. But 
they don't really have the opportunity. I think they kind of lost it, especially with that first blood, just giving so much gold away. And now LGD just hoping to go for an even lane bot. Yeah, it feels like so often you'll see the position five try that exact same play, where they come down in the lane, you're really hoping to catch the carry, and rarely works, but that time that it does, it just is so much for you. It reminds me of like trying to snipe the, the early courier mid or something for the, the mid laner's bottle. The bounties and pubs. Yeah. yeah. Level one, yeah. Sitting with a ward sitting behind the tower. That's the nice way to go. Well, again, this bottom lane, definitely uh, very happy for it for Beast Coast. Nothing to say. Going to take some pressure mid and see Smile Ooh. right on top of him. Oh, oh miss up hill. Oh, gets out of there. Just barely. It's uh, the whittling down, though, right? Zin Q is walking behind him, though, on the mid lane. Yeah, and this has been something for these Moranas. Oh, oh a nice move. Zin Q, it's got him caught. Can he survive? Fairy Fire, try to turn. Oh, C Smile, able to live. C Smile gets, it. gets the kill first. Oh, he turned uh, a, a catastrophe into something still not great, but better than nothing. It's not the worst. Gets XP, he gets to TP back mid. He's missing probably around three creeps. So it's. Neither of the mids actually get really an advantage from this. It's mostly that now he gets the full reset, but Pango obviously gets the bottle fill now from Rana, so <laughs> could be worse. Yeah. At least it was exciting, right? It's you know, got to cheer a little bit. This is all good. Ever the showman. It's uh, these main stage Moranas, though, sometimes struggling for these uh, earlier plays. Uh, some games going really well, other not so much. As now Zink, you can run to Stinger. This is a uh, you know, tried and true matchup for the Marana. Obviously, you can try and arrow into the creep if you can, but look at that positioning from Stinger to ensure it's not going to be possible. Very well done. Yeah, they're definitely taking it to him here on the earlier side. Uh, and, well, Hector, in the meantime, up top, K1, still able to farm. But you can see that in spite of some of those nice moves and the lane going well early, the CS heavily into the favor of LGD. Yeah, Whisper has, uh, what, he's two kills right now, but he only has 10 last hits. So this is the, the draw and dying. Just a strong lane to just sit there, last hit. If you can't push them out, they'll always oh. LCS you. Runs rolling the dice up top here as well. And a jump in, tries Multiple to get Stinger. Battle. It's not going to be quite enough. So ZinQ can't get that one. There's more aggression down bottom too. Just madness all around these lanes. Gojira in some trouble. We'll try and survive through it as the K runs off. But Ame right on top. Denied nicely oh, played. It. it was about 60 damage total there. And he took every one of them. <laughs> Something interesting is Faithbeyond it looks like he almost might just rush the Mask of Madness. He Did picks I? up an early Morbid Mask, which I don't know if we've seen that much, uh, especially after the nerf to creeps. So the lighting stage of it's a little weaker and it's better in this mid game where you're actually hitting heroes with it. So he probably recognizes that Hector can't jungle. He has to sit in the lane versus him, so he'll always be able to hit him. It gives him sustain as opposed to the off laners usually by the Helm or the Ring of Health. So it's an interesting way to play. Yeah, and Stinger, of course, like wanting to do a little bit of rotations early on too. So creating this 1v1 scenario that you want to be advantaged in for the slider. Oh, nothing to say, gets level six first since you smile. We'll now get it. So oh, Faith Beyond, yeah. That, I feel like it's just like a dice roll up here, right? Like one good bash from the faceless void, turn into something, one good arrow. Perfect. Everyone just battling over these creeps, the harpy spams it out. The it. six minute rune, very important for both teams. And it looks like it is going to spawn up top. Sea Smile picks that one up. It's an illusion, so not a kill rune, but can get him out of dodge if there starts to be some trouble. Still very even early on here as the rotation comes down bottom. That keeps him alive in case of a gust. And Ame is just going to fall here as Whisper. It's another kill happens, so good rotation from Sea Smile. It's really important when you're losing the CS in the lanes and you know that just sitting there extending the laning stage is not favoring you as much to just connect your cores. They bring the Storm to bot there. He's probably gonna sit here now and just make it so that if Ame TP's bot, he feels bad. He feels pressure from the Storm. Now his Snapfire is getting experience mid, so he'll get an early level six. And it's just a big question, is Ame gonna TP bot, try to accept this pressure, or is he gonna TP top and try to pressure with the Slardar? Yeah, it's a tough call to make. And uh, I mean, Snapfire probably, in my opinion, one of the absolute best fives when you're in this state of like maybe feeling you're a little bit behind, you're pressured to make moves. Getting level six on Snapfire just feels like the freest way to kill like any core in the game. It's just so much damage, especially early when you get the Snapple around the eight, nine minute mark. Cores aren't even expecting it. No. They just get one stun, the Snapple just kills them. Oh, well, you can see up there too, getting closer on that Faceless Void ulti as well. The Chrono would be a huge setup for it. They get the root on the Faith Beyond, just trying to mess around with them a little bit here. Uh, but does get the deny from Stinger as well. The rotation moving in, snap fire right on top of them. Zinq gonna be forced to leap away, uses two of them to get out. 
So just being a little bit of a bully there as Whisper down bottom is also gonna be in a big way trouble. Ame finds that kill. They drop the tombstone for it as well. And just like that, LGD, they pick up another one. I think it's a little scary for them to keep to bring all their supports top and abandon the Visage. I think they keep having success when they bring heroes there. Here's so much damage this early. If the Storm goes there, the snap, they'll probably just kill the Drought every time they go, but they abandon him. The Pango walks over casually, gets a free kill, TP's mid. Yeah, it feels like they're uh, being pressured in terms of Hector. I just want to make sure that he gets off to a good yep. game. Being a faceless void and like you said, not really wanting to go to the jungle <laughs> this early on. So that pressure is really hurting them a bit here, but another rotation here. He's out with a good rune. What can they find? Atheon interrupted before he can get the crush. And another kill for Beast Coast. You can see, though, that LGD, in spite of the kill advantage favoring Beast Coast, they're doing a good job of farming up the rest of the map, biding their time, waiting for their moment. <laughs> they're making so many moves, people can't even, like, rotate mid for the wave. They just, like, run right. back in time, so missing out a couple creeps here. But uh, Gojira gets there now, so we'll be able to grab that. And... Also, interesting from him on the snap, he's actually maxing his E and going Medallion. This is a build, it was like a year or two oh, ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was very popular. Nowadays, a lot of people go 4 4 zero. They rush the four staff. They go the shard. So I think he's trying to buff up the physical damage, especially from the Visage in this early game. Give them a lot of tower pressure, tanks them up. Yeah, you kind of have a choice, right? Where if you, let's say you go 4 4 zero, you're essentially going to amplify everything that Storm wants to do. Uh, those little gank plays, that big burst damage is Whisper, though. It's Again, same issue. Like the rotation's Whoa, really he missed well. it. He missed. Oh, nothing to say. A rare miss for him indeed, and that Chronosphere just gonna be used to get Whisper out of there. LGD, oh. not used to seeing those. That's not enough for the kill. On the second go, and well, Beast Coast gifted another chance no to survive Hector. through it, and Hector getting away. Kojira moves in. They're not gonna dive for this. The bit, Visage Bird's also going down. ZQ shows up, Arrow connects. All right, this is a very weird state of affairs down bottom. Um, after they didn't kill Whisper, everything else is just kind of TP awkward. Storms with full mana. They're looking for it, the jump in. Stone. LGD, they stuck around a bit too long. Silence though, long duration cookie for round two. See Smile, looking for the chase, wants to play aggro here. But Drow keeps hitting him and he has to back out. Now, this is all space for Faith Beyond up top to just keep farming. Well, basically the only thing they get is a kill on the Undyne. Very weird series. Of and now a race to the haste rune in the river. He gets it. So C Smile picks that one up. Okay, so Chrono gone. We yep. uh, was for the save though. That's great. Uh, obviously Rolling Thunder being used there as well. That's gonna be back pretty quick though if they want to put this pressure on the mid lane. Got to be looking for Gojira with the level six soon though. Very close right now. The really important thing is as well is uh, all the TPs were used. Only Whisper has TP now, and he's he's gonna have to TP to his lane to have some impact, and he has to resummon birds as well. Another gank, his birds die, and he's out of the game for two minutes. It's, look it's at, just scary for the map right now for Beast Coast. Look at LGD. All four heroes immediately converge up top. They want to try and take this tower and claim one of these objectives. While well, simultaneously bottom, they're going on to Beast Coast a little bit here. See Smile with the haste rune out of mana, stepping away. But they do have those kisses ready. Yeah, not much you can do in this situation. Nothing stays are holding into the mid lane, so it'll just be a tower trade right now. But uh, yeah, back to that build on the Snapfire, though. This idea of, do I want to go for this ganking potential with the, the high damage nukes that everyone usually goes for the snap, or am I going to try and buff up this like, big tempo, this whole plan that we have? Because they could Roche extremely early at this point right now, with even just like the smallest win um, from Beast Coast, which is something that is also in the cards for LGD when you have this Slardar. So it could be a, a slightly earlier timing on that uh, battle of the territory. In this game. Both teams have this really early Roche, even the fight. Both teams have really nice fighting yeah. potential around the Roche pit, so the next probably four or five minutes is going to be, especially when it hits nighttime at 15 minutes, that's where teams are going to be looking for just one kill, forcing a Roche fight. Mm -hmm. LGD dropped the tombstone, you can't really walk into Roche. The side of Beast Coast, if they don't use Chrono, you also don't walk, want to walk into a Chrono. I feel like the, the tombstones have been extremely hard to kill, I will say, for a lot of the matches on the main stage, but this game, pretty good from Beast Coast. Like, yeah. quite a few different range snap heroes, fires. good mobility. Yep, Snapfire is like the ideal one, of course. We've often seen, though, unfortunately, the Snapfires have been missing, going over those uphill kills. Uh, and unfortunately, you're, you're not getting any more attacks with those higher levels. <laughs> I also think the scary thing is that since it's maxed, you want to always use it, but yeah, that's true. For it now, Chrono connects onto two. And Gojira immediately there with the big ulti. Rolls through, no. tries to interrupt. Will it be enough? Silence now on to see Smile. He'll die, but they get two in turn. Now trying to get a little bit of separation. A good roll ends up bringing down Stinger, but then the cookie. And now on to Ame. A couple more punches. Hector has him. 
looking for the double kill. They get the invis to try and survive through this, and nothing to say, still sticking around, but he might have stuck around a bit too long. Do they have any detection? It doesn't look like it. So like that, Beast Coast win a very nice fight here. Gets set up for a good mid game. Yeah, that was a really nice chrono. Yeah, they dropped a sentry in the middle of that fight as well there too. So uh, unfortunately their last one being used, or maybe there could have been a, a chase opportunity there. Nothing to say. It looked a little scary when Chris got stunned by the pango roll after jumping in, but there's enough damage between the snap and the storm slightly jumping in on the chrono just to kill both the slaughter and dying. Yeah, she was a half the damage in that fight there. Oh, after the arrow! The arrow! Zinq timed it perfectly. Ojira so did not use that cookie that time around. So by LGD, they're going to get what they came for here, maybe. He's going to be on off cooldown, too, while he's dead. It oh, hurts. Right. Not the might of the pain. LGD is probably just going to take the mid tower. And again, mid tower is very important. It opens up the map a lot. It gives you entrance to both of the jungles. It lets you push the mid wave out to give a lot of vision to yourself. So it even gives Roche potential. So with this win, even though Beast Coast probably take the fight win, the map win is in LGD's favor. I, I love how involved Ame has been in these fights too, particularly with this build, right? Like just gets into the Dragon Lance, but like having, you know, have Falcon Blade, Wraith Band, Wand, like you're just such a strong hero in these engagements that even though you did go down that last fight, you can see, like, still well on top of the board right now, the net worth. Yeah, and uh, something also interesting is he went, he, uh, or well, not interesting, is that Gus got moving speed fairly yeah. recently when you use it. So now Drows are able to show up to fights a lot earlier, have actually mobility instead of being a very slow hero, and we might see him take the town at level 10 as well to get another 15% moving speed. He took damage, so, as I say that. <laughs> no, he's got enough. He's, he's hanging out there. You know, it's, it's really interesting, the, the dynamic that we're seeing of with these longer cooldowns that Beast Coast are playing around with, uh, as soon as the fight, even if it's a loss for LG, they just run back in there ready to go for another round of it. Uh, and we'll have to see if uh, Beast Coast can sort of match that tempo. Yeah, Drow used to be one of the older school counters to Void, because you would lose the fight mm -hmm. to Chrono, you would take Roche, you would take Tower. This was back when uh, Drow Aura was way more global, this damage for everyone. Back when Drow and Visage were on the same team. Yeah, right. not like this. Yeah. Wow. Another kill there. Stinger will drop, loses his creep to boot. That's fine. That was a, there was a smoke coming through there. So Fair. tanks it for the team. Make sure that uh, Hector gets out with his Midas build, right? Got to keep him farming. Closer are we now? The Wraith Pact is about to be completed. Whisper even foregoing boots in this game to just wow. get it that much quicker. It's got wings. The message. He's a windlace. Yeah, Stupendous. And uh, we'll see Chris Luck. He is probably deciding right now between going for the full Kai Assange or the BKB. He just bought the Ogre Club, he has nothing queued, and it probably depends on how the next fight goes. If he's able to slow the fight down and wait till he gets to jump at the, you know, like, he gets to wait for the perfect opportunity. He doesn't need a BKB, but if he feels forced that he always needs to jump in first, he needs to get a, he doesn't really need to do damage, then he'll go BKB. Yeah, that's a tough call this game, actually. Because, like, with Visage and Faceless Void as your other two cores, I mean, I, I definitely like the BKB a lot. What I like a, I like the BKB as well. What a cool build by the Drought, too. You see this going immediately into the shard after Falcon Blade Dragonlance. Radiant Seeing a lot of this hypothermia. People are big fans. But Very good versus the Void. Oh. Moonlight Shadow now. LGD looking for a fight. They do manage to hit on that scan, but... I've noticed both teams really love the uh, the Notice Me spam. You know, this, <laughs> this has been evolving through the tournament. All the LGD games spamming it quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, Gojira. You can even see it themselves, but yeah, he's going to be found. Cookies away, as there was a chance for a battle there, but backs out. The sentry does clip that ward, so when he walks up the high ground, he sees it. Probably going to look to deward it and hope there's no hero still standing there waiting for him. Oh, Arcane Rune there gets denied by the Visage Bird. Well, more time just to farm up for Ame, and likewise, 4k1. I wonder oh. how much pressure LGD feel about taking this Roche. They don't feel, I don't think they feel much pressure in terms of like, we need to Roche, it's very yeah. important for us. It's mostly that you're gonna always watch their smoke paths and that the way they slowly move around the map are always gonna be angles towards taking the dire jungle. And you see there, they smoke up there, they don't get a kill, but if they get a kill, they instantly would go Roche. So all of their moves are gonna kind of not really go towards this bot area. It's a lot gonna be towards mid or towards top, trying to get areas, get wards down. And once they get a kill, then they go to Roche. Denied. Midas used in the mid lane, ZQ it realized that they're in the area. So they will wrap around towards this tower. It actually gives a lot of information that the Faceless Void is with them for this push. It's okay. He is away though it's now. not too close. He's, he's, gone. he's back to the jungle. He's just baiting, you know? He's <laughs> <laughs> Minus mids, they hear it. Yeah. And I'm back to the jungle. 
And uh, so one thing we've talked about with the, the Pangos lately has been these Wraith Packs, right? Uh, but nothing to say going for the Diffusal of the Blink, the more classic style, I guess, in, in this mid lane. And that means that we will have just the uh, the Wraith Band, or the Wraith Pack versus no Wraith Pack as a, mm. for now. Uh, from the side of East Coast. Yeah, a lot of the Pangos that go Wraith Pact are the offlane. The yeah. mids generally have been going more towards damage. Even some Pangos skip Blink. Yeah. Because you can't chain stun with the BKB. Oh, here we go now into the jungle. They're going to, again, Moonlight Shadow, but you can see Dire Scan recognizing that they're coming that way and immediately spamming out the voice line. Whisper realizing that there's danger coming his way with nobody shown on the map. So another movement from LGD that does not bear fruit. Has to dodge out of that one. Thank you. Rotates up top. Gojira is nearby, and they will get that D ward down bottom. Looking for it, Chase on to Stinger. The heal is there, and <laughs> gonna a tough one. take a walk away, but eventually Faith Beyond will clean up that kill. Get themselves another one. And then the TP's top instantly. They're gonna try to get this kill into Roche. Now that they get one hero, they wanna chain kill one, two more, maybe three heroes, and then just force the Roche. And that's why you see Beast Coast TP's bots oh. try to avoid it. Looking for Faith Beyond. He was able to dodge out. And are you going to try and go here? There's no way that Faith Beyond can do something in this moment. That's, yeah. a, that's a tough area to play TP, with for a yeah. Pango, I think. Say they, they recognize all the TP's from Beast Coast were towards bot. They can't get to the Roche pit now. Hmm. Very well played by LGD. And into the pit they go. So a little bit of just fancy movement around the map and baiting things out. And this is going to grant them an Aegis. That was so much patience here from LGD. There's also this perfect ward. They wa Beast Coast watches the entire LGD walks into the Roche. Oh! Pit. Just jumps in, though! They didn't get out in time, and the Snapfire ultimate coming down. Will it be enough damage? Dodges back away from the silence, away from the stun. Nothing to say, trying to get aggro here. But with the rest of Beast Coast chasing, that is Chrono down, and they need to get some more here. They try and pull in, nothing to say. He's controlled, he's gonna be killed. Can they find any more? They don't get the Aegis Carrier, but they do find Undying Pango. Yeah, close to also bringing down the Slarder there too, but it, it feels a lot better oh. if we've got nothing to say. Wait a minute, what? Uh, Hector jumps away, four staff out. Things are getting a little bit weird here. As Whisper turns, ready to fight the birds, they're on top of them. Ame goes down. Stinger's still sticking around. They didn't want to bail on this. Beast Coast, they're ready to keep fighting. Ame right on top of them. Why can't no way. save the trout? Somehow, some way. Beast Coast, make it work. Uh, okay. They just kept chasing, and it worked out. There's a uh, Ame piked on the high ground. I think he was trying to get an angle slightly on the low ground. He pikes oh. himself, pushes the Hector away. He lives with just a sliver of health, doesn't get the last in. There's no BKBs on the side of LGD, so outside of Faith to be on. How did this happen? Yeah, just stuck around a bit too long there. And yeah, there's oh. that bad angle, as he said. Not quite able to get it right there. <laughs> it's so isolated at this point, too, because, you know, we talked about how, like, sure, the Slider did survive, but obviously felt pressure to just bail. Had to, had to go back, regen a little bit up before getting back into the fight. And I love the confidence as well from Beast Coast. So I think a lot of teams right there might have backed up and just been, like, thinking that, okay, the rotations are coming back in. We've lost, you know, our Faces Void isn't here. Storm's not that close right now. But they had the confidence there with the Visage uh, and the, the big amount of burst damage that they have there to bring her down. They're ready to go again, just like that Beast Coast round two of this one. This is showing Whisper Ame, top on the lane, right? They're right on top. The catch is there. Why do you have the answer? They dropped down the sentry, but Ame, he gets enough separation. They did not There's have Kiss ready to go. Storm backs out. Stinger trying to escape. And it looks like with that Beast Coast, they're going to lose Stinger, but everybody else gets out. <laughs> oh, man. If Ame died right there, we're, we're really starting to sweat for uh, LGD at this point. That was, that was a, a good attempt, right? Showing Whisper up top, very clearly on the lane like that, and then everyone else is sort of sneaking their way mid to try and bring down Ame quick, but they were ready there in the wings on the side of LGD to help protect them. So this is a scary Beast Coast timing, as we said. It's, you jump on the Drow, you kill the Drow, LGD lose a lot of damage. Faith Beyond does a lot himself, but Ame's kind of the centerpiece of this draft. Again, you know, nothing to say. He goes for the Blink Dagger. He doesn't have a crazy amount of damage. He's going for the Basher next, which also doesn't really give him an absurd amount of damage. He's mostly playing to control the enemy and just create chaos and space for Ame. So maybe Hector just Cronus him by himself every fight with a Snapple. He dies. If he doesn't have buyback, the fight's over. Right. It feels so... I don't know, it's obviously been pretty incredible, some of the Pango plays, when you do get that good dice roll, be it the disarms, be it the bashes, but it's also something where you have to be very quick to react from the side of LGD to how you play off of those chain stuns, right? Like, oh, Storm's bash, you know, quick, <laughs> someone get the follow-up. Right, no, absolutely.
Well, and there, there is still, of course, a, a hero that we haven't really seen be able to make a ton happen yet, and that's Faith Beyond. Uh, has gone for a little bit more of like this farming build. Maskaban has BKB done now and almost at the Blink Dagger. That feels like it could be another turning point here for LGD uh, to give them more avenues to take these fights, turn things around. This is sort of the greatest save. They just have a cookie. So I think his goal right now is to be able to get strong enough that he can go on the Void and kill the Void along with his Drower Pango. Like just two cores jump the Void, you kill him. Beast Coast is a lot of their big team fight spells. And again, this is just the, it all goes down to the Aegis. Losing that Roche makes it so you can't push tier twos without getting chronoed. And it just is scary for them. <laughs> the way Hector plays this too. Look at this now, they're, they're moving up. LGD know that they're gonna be in the triangle. Can they take this fight though? They're gonna be underneath a Beast Coast Ward. The smoke on smoke action. They know they're in the area. Arrow, Hector, oh, he gets bashed right at the start. Roll through, round two, can he get it off in time? BKB out, wants to jump forward, finds a couple, but it's not a great target. The Chrono, he catches oh, Nama on the backside. Immediately, see Smile right on top, they find him, but do they have the control? The bird drop, a couple more stuns, four staff to the low ground, keeps him fine for now. Faith Beyond, ready to fight, going toe to toe against see Smile, Hector and now on to Whisper. They're in trouble, they gotta get the hell out of here, and Beast Coes lose it as LGD say no. Nothing to say. He silently, after the roll, he walks all the way towards the mid lane. He's following Hector because he's uh, corrosive haze the entire fight. He uses after the BKB, catches him on the mid lane. He goes down and just, again, it's the chrono is really important for them. Yeah, and it gets so spread out after that too, right? The tombstone's on the high ground as well. Like they had the vision, but they couldn't quite even just get the timing to bring it down. Gotcha. <laughs> what a strange start to that fight too, right? Like uh, Hector getting stunned up, doesn't have the time walk to get rid of it right away too. It's been too long with everything happening there and the kiss is coming through, not quite connecting, but then this sort of, you think this salvages it for a moment, right? It just looks so scary. You can see Hector has to run away. He not able to jump the drought with his team. There's not much follow-up. The Chrono, while he catches the Drought, also cuts off the whole team from getting to the Drought. They have to walk in a long roundabout way around the bubble, and it's too slow. Wow, they uh, were able to make that one work for LGD. Of course, you think about how different that fight goes if nothing to say doesn't have the role already going as they go into it. Um, so really impressive performance from them. As LGD, that all starts seeing that they were gonna move up into that high ground and then run into them after. Now we're kind of like slapping down the old uh, reset button here. We're going to look around, try and get some boards down that same area around Roche, right? And potentially like two minutes away from that's going to start spawning. Uh, Roche and, uh, and Tier 2s, pretty much. That's uh, the time of the game that we're at now. And so this is the really impactful part of the fight. It's not actually just winning the fight and while they're dead. It's actually the Chrono cooldown. So there's no Chrono. We'll probably see LGD try to take the Tier 2 tower because, again, they all want this map control. Their entire goal this game is to get Aegis so that they don't die in the Chrono. That's all they need to do. So anytime they use Chrono, you want to take a tower and try to force an outpost. Oh, you can see 50-50 just about. Slight edge towards LGD at this point in the game. They're going to get close, it looks like, to trading off Tier 2 towers, both top and bottom at this point. Let's see if they actually get it. Uh, but we also saw that Zing Q, he's the one that's eyeing up that next Wraith pack. So it's going to be a significant amount of time before LGD have theirs completed. I'm trying to think of a solution for if Hector gets gone on first. It's and they're really not like, good. no, it's it's really not. Like you can't even buy one really. Like with these heroes, with these upgrades. I mean, I guess theoretically there's a uh, snap save. Okay, there's one. The agonims. <laughs> That's a ways away though. All right, you know? start saving, go cheer. Yeah. <laughs> Got your job. Uh, but it, it just speaks to like how important his, his positioning is going to be for the rest of this game. Yeah. The one nice thing is uh, they changed the role so you can DKB between the chain stuns. Yeah. He wasn't able to get it off in the last fight, but. You'll need a lot of follow-up between the Kango roll, the Slardar bash, the Marana arrow. There's a lot of different factors that will lead into it. All right, now the chase, Moonlight Shadow, heads All on right. through. Can't get caught if you're not with the team. All right, oh. can't get be first one dead in the team fight if you're not there. I, I like this. Holding a nice ward though. This is, LGD doesn't really want to force it into the ward. They kind of want to bait the mid lane, and when someone pushes the lane, they want to jump in. Anytime you walk high ground into a ward, you know it's there. That's when the fights get hard. They have perfect vision of you. They always get the initiati initiation on you, and it's a little scary. Oh. Crush to start. Good BKB. Faith Beyond trying to bring down Stinger. They're cooking him around. Gets a little bit of separation. Sea Smile also not forced to use that BKB. Wow, very interesting. That's an expensive start to a fight. Go for BKB on the, uh, the edge kill like that. 
And Hector now has a Manta as well, so it's going to be forced that BKB necessarily Looking early. for the chase. Big jump. Nothing to say. Will he get it off? He does. Rolling around back and forth, but they've already killed off the Undyne. Now looking for nothing to say. They get him caught. And Ame. the photo on the side. Ame, he's in trouble with the Manta, the Batches. Do they have enough to bring him down? BKB gets a little bit of separation. They don't have Manta to take off that silence. So Ame is going to get back home again, able to escape. Still a fight win for Beast Coast. Well, unfortunately for them, though, it's uh, not going to find the big prize there quite yet. Bit of a, a long wait here for them in, in the river. And they, just as they said, uh, all they want to do is jump mid. But they weren't fast enough on the connection on the Enchantress. They used the roll. He doesn't get the stun on the storm either. So they have to back out. And there's also this really nice ward. It's left over from the fight in the tri camp from four minutes ago that Beast Coast did. And that's why they get the jump there. Yeah, it's actually crazy. It's from that entire time. <laughs> Yeah, a bit rough there, unfortunately, for LGD. Definitely uh, not a team who you typically see, like, miss a clear like that uh, after an engagement of that territory. Chrono used, though. So another big timing. Now, even when Roche respawns, there won't be a Chrono. So a little window for LGD to take a good fight. And I will say also, if they be on the end of this Agnum Scepter, that's going to be another huge moment for them, just being able to stand in those puddles, but they've also had a good ward hanging out here. They see Gojira. See Smile jumped right at the start. Where's the save? Cookie out. The wave will see. He gets out of there. Oh my god, the cookie save. It actually worked. But Whisper, he's the one that's caught now. Four staff. Dude, Beast Coast, they're covering each other really well, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. Faith Beyond is too strong on this Slardar. Stinger controlled, also killed. LGD find another win here. Roche and this time, Roche is ready for him. Oh, you saved your storm. That part's great, but obviously uh, not having the Chrono there, they can't really fight. You're gonna head immediately into the pit, and this is the big one we've been waiting for. And Ame having so many struggles with the positioning this oh. game, picking up a Blink Dagger. Interesting. A very different look for him. And they're actually not trying to go in for the Roche. Instead, they want to uh -huh. keep finding kills. Ojira in some trouble. See Smile trying to interrupt and get his buddy out, and actually Maisha's to it. So breaking the Blink Dagger of that Slardar, and they're buying enough time. This is worrisome now for LGD, though. Chrono's up in five seconds. There's potential for them to contest this Roshan. Yeah, let's say it won't end up happening, but uh, with how much they delayed it from Beast Coast, very surprising, because honestly, it looks like it's going to be pretty free. The birds are going to come in. They're going to see that this Roshan is dying right now. It's not going to be able to ruin any of their plans, as uh, the Aegis and Shard will both be picked up there. And uh, Shard? Currently in the hands of Zin Q. No, no, it He's won't just be the Zin courier, Q. unfortunately. Yes. Wait, are you sure? Wait, what? Morona Shard? <laughs> the fourth leap. That's not your favorite? I do like the fourth leap, man. Uh, they're giving it to the uh giving it to the Slarder, actually. The Slarder is really nice. It lets him not have to press ult before his crush, so he doesn't have to worry about kind of slowing down, missing an attack by pressing ult. Yeah. It, so it's all about the burst now for Void. If Void lives, Beast Coast probably have a good chance of winning the fight. If Void dies without pressing Chrono, without pressing BKB, I don't really see a way from the fight, LGD. Yeah, of course, speaking of shards, also doesn't have the shard on the faceless Void right now either. They've changed it a lot so that it's more you don't need it as much, mm -hmm. but it doesn't become as good with it. Right. You know, the interesting thing about this game, too, is that I think for either team, if you win one of these fights in the late game scenario, buildings are going to fall so quickly, whether it's with the Visage or whether it's with the Drow. It's just a scary, scary state of affairs. And uses the Manta, goes in, BKB out from Faith Beyond, and then tries to escape. Hector and of course lifted, the arrow. Is going to use it now, but could jump forward. Oh, if he saw the vision there, might have gone for the chrono. Yeah, I think the call was from Gojira just saying, like, I'm not there for the follow up. We don't have enough. We're losing it on some storm mana. Just reset. Like, we don't want to force a fight into Aegis uphill by their outposts. Like, this seems like a bad idea, guys. It does feel sometimes like it's, you know, pulling everybody back from ready to just jump on them. There's a lot of back and forth in the fights. Beast Coast has a lot of, uh, they have four staffs, they have the cookie, they have a lot of different jumps. So it always seems like they're able to kind of maneuver back and back and back, but it's all on, do they connect with the arrow? Do they connect with the pango rolls? It's just, at some point someone's gonna get stunned. And whether or not the Void can protect by chronoing aggressively is the question. It's a very interesting game when it comes to the terrain as well. There's like where the fights actually take place. Cause like if you find these choke points with the chrono, it's obviously gonna be very strong for Beast Coast, but at the same time, choke points for a pango. Rolls all over the place, better combinations. There's a lot of ways to get over top of the terrain as well for both teams. And it's just down to who finds that initiation. Bloodthorn completed now on the storm as they are heading towards mid for Beast Coast. LGD continuing their spree down bottom as 
and we'll likely see a couple more towers fa uh, fall in the duration of this Aegis. I think Beast Coast has been doing a very good job in terms of the, uh, the lane pressure, which isn't necessarily something I would always say is like one of their strengths as a team. But uh, all of them map right now from like Whisper, Stinger, and Hector through a lot of this game to try and keep them in it. Oh, jumps back line. Whisper getting enough separation. And, oh, Faith Beyond might be in a little bit of trouble. He's pretty far forward. They get the pull for round two. Hector They're gets a good chrono, but it doesn't find the drow. That's not good enough. He's going to kill off that Undyne. See, Smile gets some separation. Ami wanted to chase, but can't quite go for it. Nothing to say. Backs away. And the Tombstone is down. So they find two kills in the midst of the Aegis and with a bad chrono. It's a, I think they could just jump a little too far. All the TPs take so long. It takes seven seconds for even Drowdy to show up to the fight. So now by that point, the BKB on the starter is out. He's, it's just, I think they just chase a little too far. Yeah, it's a bit of that dragging out of the fights that you were talking about before. Able to sort of like break things back. Um, very good versus a uh, an Undying, typically, right? But that was excellent timing. As you can see, like we got Wraith back and we got the Tombstone here. And Snapfire, you only got so many shots, right? Only, <laughs> only a couple, you know, six, you know, I'm counting in there in the revolver, right? and hard to bring down both those targets. So uh, still pretty good for Beast Coast, but again, it's that same notion of just like, okay, the Chrono's down. What do we want to do now as LGD? The other big thing is uh, they glyphed the tier two bot and it was not their first tier two. So there's no glyph reset the next five minutes. There's no glyph for Beast Coast. So LGD has the opportunity to push towers, but anytime you lose fights, if you're not very, very confident, like they don't have Chrono guys, we can go, we can go, we can go. It's maybe you're going to step back, say, oh, we need this next item. We need to go together more, play a little slower. Oh, He's hopping all over the place, skipping some bottles here. Crush. See, Smile has to zip away from that one. And it looks like he will get away and see if Gojira also does. Faith Beyond, is he lucky? I can't quite get him. He's ogre flopping. He's cooking. Trying to get away as fast as possible. Also, there's some, something interesting is uh, C-Smile went back for the Orchid, third item, which uh, isn't too common these days. A lot of the storms have been going for a Witchblade or an Ags. He's going for the Ags next, but I think he's kind of recognizing that uh, nothing to say doesn't have any defensive items, attack. but thankfully for him, he's just picked up an Aeon Disc that's locked. So he's trying to just BKB go in, jump out, create a chaos in the fight, and then his re-engage is when he actually uses the Orchid. That's when the BKBs are down, the Manta's down, the roll is down, you get the kill, and Hopefully at that point the fight's over. I feel like he's been getting away with a lot this game on the yep. Storm as well. Like I feel like C-Smile's done an excellent job of just holding his BKB for the opportune moment. He's had a lot of times where I really thought like, okay, like, I would need to BKB here. Right. Like one straight arrow, I'm just dead. Or you know? a dash I'm in from way too to much say. panic right now. He's been playing it perfectly. Exactly what they need from him. And this Midas paying off has the Mjolnir done now. Could think about a Chrono again if they feel so inclined. But it looks like the call is going to be wait for that Scotty yeah. to get there. It's for actually, Hector. yeah, it's flying there right now. So he is mega farmed. It's going to be very helpful if he is getting chain stunned up there. And uh, as the game goes later, there's less and less concerns with this idea of just like, okay, we can go now to the Chronos down because like fights tend to get like a little bit more spread out as they also take respawn longer. timers come out. Yep. Yep. So the big thing right now for both teams, both teams are thinking, everyone's thinking about their carry players. They're still really important in this game. It's Chrono the Drow, good chance of winning. The fight's maybe not over, maybe it's buyback, but that's all you need to do to win. And on the side of LGD, Ame is just thinking, how does he dodge the Chrono? That's why he's the blink, that's why he's the pike. He wants to just not be solo Chronoed. He can even hit the void in the Chrono and kind of dissuade him from killing his teammates. So both of them are gonna be kind of playing this cat and mouse game where Dyer's Void doesn't want to show because he always wants to be able to Chrono and Drow doesn't want to show until he sees the void. So. Everyone else is going to have to throw their bodies in. I think that's why Faith Beyond keeps going first. Jumps first. There's an opening, and can they bring him down? Yes. Why dead? Uses the chrono on Faith Beyond and two of his other teammates also. He really they go rolling there. inside. They will bring down one, but nothing to say. Still ready to fight. But look at him. K1 right on top of Ame. The Shadow Blade keeping him alive. Faith Beyond bought back. Can they do it? Round two of the ZQ. They turn. They bash. They crush. See, Smile doesn't have any mana left. Has to get out of there. Whisper playing a little bit of intercept at the moment. But with the chase down, Ame coming in. Hector oh. turns, tries to bring him down. Oh my goodness gracious. And kill him off. Three dead for nothing. This fight is looking all LGD. As Whisper also, he too will die. Yeah, they went for a cheap start to that fight, throwing the kisses on the Undying, trying to get themselves just a one leg up in this engagement. But then uh, the big Chrono, right? Catching Faith Beyond, but also to the allies, so the damage can't come out there in time. That exact plan you were talking about, Gunner, in terms of like Ame not being in there, just waiting that damage from the faces, fully just chucking that damage into the Chrono. Beast could not get enough on the side of this engagement.
It looks really good. Undying gets no spells off. He instantly dies, and Faith Beyond stuck. Doesn't get his BKB off before the Chrono. He goes down. But you can see how tanky he is. The Void has to use his entire BKB duration, the entire fight, the Chrono just hitting the starter, and he buys back and shows back up in the fight. Yeah, and the terrain coming to play for sure, right? Nothing to say, like a dream situation. He can bounce off whatever he wants, this engagement, gets a couple of heroes through that big roll, and then of course, see smile as well. Finally getting caught very early without the BKB. Didn't have a lot left. And you know, I noticed that Gojira was also holding six mangoes uh, in his backpack. So he's trying to make some cool plays for his storm, oh. but when you die, you know, not that helpful. What a big opening for him, LGD, as Beast Coast are losing that fight with the Chronosphere. Things are really going to start sliding away from them here. It's a fairly late Roche. Still two minutes now for it to respawn. Gojira does take the little Shredder attack, so a little more helpful for the Tombstone killing. Yeah, that's huge, actually. And the Wraith Packs, of course. Yep. Two big things that are just, you know, hit-based, right? You don't need to do damage. Just hit it very fast, and you'll get rid of it. Also, it looks like Faith Beyond is going for an Andis, which I kind of like, because again, his job in this game right now is just to go in, BKB, that's why he buys the Ags. It tanks him up, gives him stat resist, resistance, sorry, and just exists in the fight. And he forces the Chrono, which is all he needed to do. It does feel like there might be damage problems later and later, though, I feel like for LGD, you know? Like, there's there's so much control, and like, we're buying these Aeon Discs on, on your mid laner and on your off laner, but at the end of the day, if Ame is the one who, like, let's say, like, goes down uh, at the start of this fight, it's really going to be tough for them. Yeah, nothing to say hasn't even combined his yet. It's still yeah. locked in his inventory. He hasn't felt any threat yet. And he also took the Rolling Thunder duration, which is not that common these days as a talent, but it kind of shows that both him and Faith Beyond just are creating chaos, kiting the fight out, stunning heroes, and just playing for this slow fight where at some point, Drow's going to proc her ult three times in a row. That's not like slow. Go. This is the dieback. Faith Beyond in trouble. Starting to drop down low, but not dead yet. Bouncing oh, back and forth, and Seek Smile barely survives through that one as they will find the arrow on to Hector. Manta jumps out, jumps He's back, back in. Chrono, oh, he did it to him. And now Marana already hit, turns on to Ame, looks for a couple more punches. And Faith Beyond, he survived through so much of this, but as they chase him through the river, usually Slard are strong there, not this time. A hundred seconds dead. The time walk in and back out was exactly what they needed. From the brink of death into a double kill there for Hector, bringing it back there with the Chrono. Whew. And the die back there of Faith Beyond. It's going to give so much space now for Beast Coast, and maybe they can finally get themselves near this Roche Pit in a successful time. <laughs> That's actually the first time they're going to be set up for it. Now 80 seconds with no Slardar. That was a nice Yo. jump. See how close it is to just killing the storm here. He loses with such little health. He gets out, and Hector just also gets caught by the Yules. It looks really bad here. He gets <laughs> yeah. Yules, arrow doesn't get his BKB off. Manta dodges. That's a Scotty. <laughs> Some health right there, you know. It feels. I mean, it's a choice, right, to take that. You can always BKB out of Yules, right? So yep. he decided this is going to keep me alive. I'll be able to survive through it, and you, the plan was there the whole time. Also, unlucky for Faith Beyond, he had a bash actually queued up, but he gets a first hit bash from Hector, just kills him right there. <laughs> He's smiling. Unlucky, I guess. Unlucky. Yeah. It's always the bashes. Arrow out. LGD. Can they contest this? They do have roll. They're in the area. Roche is falling quickly, but Beast Coast, they're already okay. in position. Okay, Gojira, and... okay. They're just ready to go, man. Yeah, he doesn't want any blinks happening. And a full bot refresher. Jumps forward, pulls onto one. Ame controlled. And they do, they have enough. The BKB, the turnaround. Trying to back out of there. Hector right on top of Ame, but they've already killed one. Of course, it was the eggs, right? You know? Oh, yeah. Eggs from Roche. Yeah, of course. He was already queued up. He's 4,000 gold, but yeah. On Sache, Zing Q also going to drop now. 10k gold in the lead. Beast Coast looking to come in here, shock the world, take down LGD. We'll see if they can do it in this game one. That's also why this third Roche is so important if it drops an Ags. It's 6,000 gold instantly swung every time you get the third Roche. It just... That, that could have been any better, you know? Like, yeah. of all the heroes to get an Agnums at that moment, to chase down right after the fight, knowing you have so much confidence. And of course, you know, Hector obviously recognizing just how important that Chrono Sphere is. He's sitting here with the Refresher. Chrono just came back up. They're on the high ground. They've got the Minus Armor going into these buildings here. They want to get a little bit of something here before backing up. What more can they do? That was Mangoes, right? He's back in full man on the storm. He's ready. They knew the whole time. The this is going to be a lane of racks. They're bringing back nothing to say now, but the jump forward, they find why he's in trouble. Ame trying to stop the bleeding, but there is no tourniquet here. It's all gone. They just keep finding uh, the kills and cutting them out. I think especially it's just Chris Luck. The amount of times he's able to survive, get pulls off cooldown, 
done again and again and again. Just all they need for to the do. crush, the roll forward. Starts the fight. The arrow is there. Anyway, Where's the time? save? Looking for the cookie. Gets him in a little bit deeper. K1 Ooh. caught. That's Aegis down. This is the best that LG can hope for right now. Can they keep it going? Looks for it. He, Hector. Dude, he just goes in. And it's only for an undying. Yeah, well, now he's got one more. Round two. Chase, chase. Ooh. Look for more. Gets out just barely in time. How does this guy hold his BKB? He's not afraid. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Enchantress comes in and is going to just be safe. Okay. Four All step, right. four step, cookie everything. Beast Coast get out. And they can't even chase. They know that the Storm TPs, but there's still another Chrono just ready. Oh, the crowd's starting to get into it a little bit here. They're feeling it. And for LGD, again, this team that has made it to so many Time finals, been money. top three or top two year after year after year, this would be such a huge upset. Casual 1K swing, two bounty runes just chilling right. in the, the Radiant jungle, you know? And now Chris Luck also has a refresher of his own. So two poles, he has a timeless relic, so it's now like a 3.5 second stun just on the storm. Pretty much two black holes now on the side of Beast Coast. That's not even commitment. He can jump in, jump out, not feel too bad. He has a lot of mana regen. Even more mangoes will come out from, you know. And I don't know if you saw that, but the Storm Spirit, just a little lesson for your pubs out there. Carry some dust, folks. Even uh... Wait, explain yourself. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? I How is that a support red. item? Yeah, oh. I'm confused. Isn't he a mid? <laughs> this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. There's so they're going to look to push high ground. Again, they have only one corner right now, but it doesn't seem like LGD can actually take the fight to them. Ame just has to get a really nice burst on that void. You saw how fast he died with the Curse of Haze. That's what they need to do. Kill him in one stun and hope that's enough. Yeah. Uh, the Silver Edge here. Tower fallen, roll in, jumps in, jumps out. Oh. A stun used, nothing to say, not doing enough. Meanwhile, kisses come from on high, separating LGD, forcing out that Moonlight Shadow, but they are not willing to back out yet. It's East Coast have another round of summons. Waiting for that next creep wave to come through. No more roll now, though. It's a really big tool that the LGD needs to use. Nothing to say his whole build is kind of around using the roll to extend the fight. Thing. Gets vision, misses on the jump. See smile backs out. Hector, control onto one. They find the trowel in the back. Right on Go top Go of him in the meantime. I think he was there too. <laughs> Gojira lost his mind, lost his life. But the jump in and they find nothing to say. Oh, God, Hector, he's taking so much damage with the marksmanship and the amp. Chase, nothing to say, looking for it. The crush is there, a couple of punches, but K1 gets out. Whisper's coming in. He's right on top, Z Smile, find and bash and trying to kill. Will it be enough? The Hex is there, a couple more punches. Oh, no Ame's more. dead. Whisper barely survives through. K1 jumps in, finds Undying, trying to bring him down. Ame is still beaten, though. He's got a ton of damage. K1 has to be careful. A couple more marksmanship rocks is all he needs, but he gets away again. No, Bango, nothing to say. They jump in and get the kills. Beast Coast, they get a lot of objectives, but LTD, they're not out yet. It's the Mega Creeps, though. That is rough. That is real rough. They're running down the lane immediately. Hector has the buyback, but yeah, as he escapes the fight, he walks to mid. There's only one Ranger Axe left, but LGD can't stop them from taking the Wrath. There's a whole fight going on, so secures the Mega Creeps, goes back in for the fight. The backtrack, he's level 25, has 20% chance, but not enough. And down bottom, there's a yeah. DD, but they're not going to check for it. It's going to instead head up towards the high ground now. LGD with a creep wave and a dream. Oh, they buy a Deso. They yeah. want to go for everything here. <laughs> can they do it? This would be a miraculous comeback if they could make it happen. It's just all the one stun, right? And uh, that Aeon Disc also still prepped here from Faith Beyond. He brings it back out into his inventory here. Mike Turn. giving that chance for the control here. He doesn't care about his damage. There's only one Chrono for the next 50 seconds. So we'll see if Hector, if he gets forced to use this uh, refresher, it's pretty scary for him. It will be three minutes with no Chronos. Yeah, with That's coming back. All we, the minus armor. We saw the plan last time. Oh, jump jump in. in. Hex control. Yeah. Faith Beyond survives. Aeon Disc keeping them alive. They're TPing in right now to this catapult. Creeps are in LGD's base. This is about as all in as you can get at this point, but ah, they're not willing to take that risk yet. Oh, and Hector, he's got a little surprise. They got to call it. Oh, they're backing out. Oh, he sold it. He bought a blink. He got rid of it. He wants to save the... Well, I guess he doesn't have buyback anymore, so... Kind of all in. I actually wouldn't be surprised if he just buys an Aeon Disc. At this point, all I need to do is press the Chronos and exist in the fight. Yeah. And Beast Coast will win. It's dangerous. 
again without buybacks and you you, you know we look at this lead 15,000 gold mega creeps into the favor but you're still dealing with a drow ranger like if you lose with no buybacks in this game east coast will still lose and, and you saw what the plan was like way back on that fight you guys remember in the radiant base gojira being by the fountain like how does that even happen that's literally just i'm just trying to stop drought right like i'm getting on top of the drow that's my job we didn't pick the earth spirit the tusk, the clockwork. So I, I guess that's just me, right? So I, I think what he was trying to do was buy a ghost scepter from the enemy fountain, but he actually had, I think, six items in the inventory and three in his backpack, so he couldn't get an item <laughs> slot to get the, the fruit stand, stand dude. Yeah. Yeah. Those you mangoes. <laughs> it's too much, too much. There's also a cheese just hit, you know, hanging out in the pit. Kojir just notices it. Nice, nice. That guy this is pretty good. Uh, a couple of laughs. He didn't have a space for the cheese either. Had to drop some dust. It's a TI classic, you know? It really is. The Ags is the important part. one. Yeah, that's true. Chasing. Looking yeah, for the courier. May now. Completed. That's also, big. something interesting. Hector went for the eagle song of his swift blink instead of the blink dagger itself. Mm. So. 25 agility is very important for okay. I, He could go not butterfly. Not versus Drow, it's not, but you know. <laughs> he could go a butterfly, but uh, I think it's just me a Swift Blink. I'm just surprised that he would pick it over the Blink Dagger. Yeah. Ame uh, actually completed the Aeon Disc as well, so needs to be careful about taking any extra damage uh, casually, just in case that one gets procced on something else and doesn't have it for the Chrono. What happens when carry players see that item? You know, they don't really understand how it works. Someone has to explain it to you. <laughs> oh my them. god. Unbelievable. You, it's only Faith Beyond right now with buyback for LGD, so it, this is the scary part. You have one hero with buyback, but he's not the best at pushing out lanes, so you feel like, you know, there's pressure on the Pango, pressure on the Drought to kind of be the ones to push these lanes out, but they get jumped, they're out of the game. So they're kind of forcing Faith Beyond to always have to push every lane on. He's a Slardar. He doesn't want to do that. So instead, they're going to try to smoke up and get a kill while Gojira is pushing out the mid lane. Yeah, and he's just so quick on that too, right? Like, they, they know what the situation is. All the lanes gone for a minute. LGD, they would be looking for a kill. They're going to get some D wards open, open up their jungle to let Ame get some more farm. But eventually, we'll be pulled back in. Now, keep in mind, though, you know, like you said, there's no buyback on Hector, right? Oh, okay, big jump. Jump, finds one. That's a quick kill onto Y, and with no buyback, this fight just got a little bit harder. Faith Beyond looking. They wanted to defend that ward, but it's a bit too dangerous. Faith Beyond under the moonlight shadow. The birds with Whisper right on top. Walks in vision, gets him there. Hex, Chrono, connects Faith Beyond. Also, nothing to say, they got him. Second round, Chrono ready to go. Waiting for their moment, though. Do they have the mana? Hector jumps in, gets Ame. the Chrono on to Ame. And the chase comes. See Smile, Aeon Disc. It keeps him alive for a moment, but only a moment. Although, he gets the BKB off. Now a little bit of a runaway. No the gash, the okay, a couple more punches. Cheese, See Smile, backs away, survives. Jumps back in, tries to bring down one. Nothing to say. Hey, still living through it. He's silenced forever, but they don't have the damage for the kill. That's a couple chronos, a lot of ultis used, and LGD, they still survive. Even holding the buyback there on the Undying. Okay. Couple here. Obviously, losing a Faith Beyond, that is a bit rough. But uh, he, he is, what, 3,000 gold he can spend with, without care now at this point? Yeah, Cheese used on the Storm. That's why he survived that fight. But Refresher on the Storm, Refresher on the Void. Visage has to resummon birds. It's just a, it's so scary. You almost see Faith Beyond just goes down instantly here, but a nice quick four staff kind of pushes him back. Really has been the, the story of this game, it feels like. It's just the positioning. It's like pulling everything apart, trying to drag you through these fights, and you know, even for a Storm Spear with the cheese, like he, he needs so much mana to get around. Faith Beyond has to be careful here. He does not buy back. They will find Gojira, they'll find Stinger. Roly poly, no chrome. No, gotta be careful, jump in, find one. Thinking about running onto Ame, but this fight's getting a little bit weird. Silence connects onto C Smile, Whisper there, finds Zing Q, who does get the leap out. Again, these moments as Roche is about to respawn. And four seconds. And unusually, they're in the position. He zips right Ooh, through the good blink. Right now. Good blink away. C Smile just, just right but look at him. They just missed it. The tier fours are going down. They need to get back home. Nobody's home at the ancient. The fight is going on. LGD might just lose this game while the fight is uh, happening. Nobody is home. Oh, the creeps, they're pretty strong. Beast Coast gets some help from Love as those catapults are going to bring him down one by one. Faith Beyond trying to stop it. Yes, sir. Do they even get any damage onto the ancient defense of the ancients? Whisper moves on in. Really nice play all 
Chronos, uh, the way they, they kind of maneuver these fights is really impressive from the side of these guys. I was very scared for them. They would just chrono. Drow would be, you know, alive. They would. It looked like they could rose, they could tower, but these guys just keep holding on. As we said, the lane push, Enchantress and Whisper. Great job of pushing out the lanes, kind of delaying the game, getting all their timings. And Chris Luck, I think yeah. that was a oh. performance right there on the Storm Spirit. Getting a little bit of love from the crowd there, Chris Luck, and of course the doggies. A stalwart, these uh, these allies here, you know, just no serious emotions. game face there. No, yeah. no emotions at all on the dogs. No. Very impressive. <laughs> Killer. Well, um, uh, what a way to end this first game here. And I feel like, to me at least, this is sort of, you know, everybody came in saying, all right, Beast Coast could do this, but I don't think anybody expected them to come in in this style. Going into game two, any changes that you feel like you would want to see? Anything that really, like, scared you with the drafts in particular? I think the Undying has somewhat been found out a lot in this tournament. It was very, very popular even leading into the tournament. But the Visage response, I think, is something that has been very common and usually banned out. But yeah. they give up the Visage, so maybe you just question whether you want the Undying or whether you want to ban the Visage if you really value the Undying. And the later picks are, you know, it's hard to say, right? Every game it'll change, but I think particularly the Undying and the Visage. I feel like they also maybe struggled a little bit in terms of enabling all their cores, in a way, on the side of LGD in this game, right? It felt like everything just had to be for Omic, right. which sometimes it can work, but when you get to this point in the game, obviously that was a very big struggle for them. Versus Chrono too, right? You yeah. just right. chrono him off cooldown. Well, uh, an amazing series to start our day. Four teams going to be eliminated. We'll see if we find one of them in the next game or if we're going to be able to push it to game number three. For now, we're going to head back to the panel. Thank you so much indeed. One game up for Beast Coast here against PSG LGD. And uh, it is in a fantastic fashion that they are able to do so. I feel like we just witnessed Beast Coast. I mean, there was, there was not a beat dropped, I felt, from not being there in person, Lacoste. I feel we have to start by mentioning that. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, uh, C smiled. He's there, you know, just enjoying himself alone. They're on stage while the rest <laughs> of the team is playing from the hotel. But you could not feel it. That's something that James Jenkins did mention is because uh, this team has been together for so long they have so much experience it's like a family this is not like a team mm -hmm. and uh, you, it doesn't it seems like it doesn't make the difference for them because they just beat PSG LGD here on the main stage and uh, yeah I, the way I, I want to say anything was wrong with the draft from PSG LGD mm -hmm. uh, something that Gunner did mention is that this undying sim goes for Shadowfin I think we can make a similar reference that he got figured out and this, this is one of the best uh, moments that I've seen as a faceless with, where he goes in, scouts things out, and then mm -hmm. comes back in with a sharp place. It's a really nice chrono. But that happens so often, right? Where it felt like they could have won the fight on the side of PSG LGD if they just managed to burst that void down, but a couple of times they just fell so short to killing him and the tides of the entire fight would turn. And honestly, that really was just the story of the game. Which team was able to kite the other team better? Which team was able to play the longer fights better? And of course, when you were baiting out these cooldowns, these force offs, you could go back in and these coasts just have the tools to go on LGD's heroes and punish them. But I really do have to say, they came in with such confidence today. Even when LGD went for that first Roche, Hector with the chrono instantly. He didn't care that they got the Aegis. He didn't care that they were fighting versus undying on a choke point. He went in. He chronoed them. They got the Mortimer's kisses. Maybe they, maybe they didn't turn into a really good kill or fight. They, they got like maybe one target. But the fact that they're able to take these plays and make these moves without needing anything just says so much.